Let's talk to David Paul. He is the Managing Director of VectorVest UK. Very good morning to you, young David. Good morning, Moss. Right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thought-provoking slides, hopefully, uh, to run through. Let's kick off with the first one, the VV UK Composite um, Index. Okay, this is all about your market timing. Um, long term, short term on the UK, I guess they're both in decline. Yes, uh, the short term trend is down, most the uh, longer term trend has been down since the start of October. Uh, there was a, a little rally uh, a, about a week or so ago where the short term trend turned up, I think from October the 30th, but that was short lived, full stall. Yep. Uh, so uh, both uh, uh, measures of the market, in fact all of our measures of the market, we have five of them, I only talk about two of them on here, but we have five of them and all of the measures of the market are down as we go into the trading day, that's for sure. Uh, right. The market's very oversold. Uh, and uh, it's sitting on a very important support level that goes back for quite a long time. Uh, uh, I would expect this support level to hold. However, if it doesn't hold, there's an awful lot of fresh air yes. to the next support level. Yep. So uh, uh, our advice uh, is uh, to our subscribers is to sit in our hands, not to be buying any shares at this time. Uh, unfortunately, doing nothing is much more difficult than it would seem. Right. Uh, so to sit and wait for those plums of opportunity to come around in both uh, the UK market and as we'll see in a second in the, in the US market, uh, that's going to be essential over the next day or two. Understood. OK, well, let's go to the next slide, the uh, VV USA. Again, I'm guessing short term and long term trends are both down on your system. Quite so, yes. Uh, again, there was that uh, little bit of a, uh, a full storm a few days ago, uh, but uh, certainly uh, the uh, short-term trend down, especially after yesterday, uh, and uh, the longer-term trend uh, down as well since the start of October. We've been advising people not to buy shares in the American market uh, since I think about the 3rd or the 4th of, of October, so it kept us out of all of this route. Again, uh, an awful lot of uh, fresh air uh, below these very important support levels on the American market. Uh, but uh, the sell-off yesterday was in fairly light volume, uh, so, uh, and it seems to be charting an inverse head and shoulders reversal at the lows. Which but is bullish for the moment. Well, it, it still has to confirm, it still has to break above the neckline, which defines that he inverse head and shoulders yep. reversal. Uh, but uh, again, let's just sit and wait for the signals. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. Uh, and if we focus on the process and wait uh, for the general market to confirm, uh, then the money will take care of itself. Okay. okay, well, let's go on to the next slide, which is actually the Dow. What is this telling the crowd? Well, the Dow is, uh, the Dow, uh, is, is uh, charting. That's uh, just a blow-up of that uh, inverse head and shoulders reversal. Nice run-up. It's made a, a low uh, of a couple of days ago, and that low came in at an exact Fibonacci retracement of the last range, which uh, many fund our technically orientated traders find uh, a, an important support and resistance level. In the right yesterday, it still didn't break uh, Friday's low. Yep. Uh, so uh, uh, if we can uh, move up and take out the neckline, which defines that head and shoulders reversal, uh, then that would be very strong confirmation that this bottom is in. Again, the market very oversold. Our measures of oversold in terms of the market breadth uh, and market momentum are uh, right down uh, where I define them as a mega oversold situation. So a buy signal which is preceded by that mega oversold, I think could quite easily precipitate a strong run into year end. The Christmas rally. Uh, let's hope so. Okay, well, let's talk about some individual stocks. Uh, why did you pick Anglo? Well, uh, first of all, I'm holding it myself, <laughs> right? Uh, and I like to talk about what I'm doing myself. Uh, it's uh, trending up the page. Uh, the uh, on vector base, the green line above the above the uh, price plot. Uh, is our valuation, so we believe it's undervalued, and it's also growing earnings uh, quite strongly. Uh, it's it's it pulled back recently the last old top, which is a bullish pattern, and uh, our longer term uh, uh, trend uh, detection device, which I talked about on your program the last time, called the Midas Touch, has recently given a, a strong buy in Anglo American. So um, uh, the uh, euro dollar uh, would seem to, the euro would seem to have 
uh, made a bottom over the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and so a little bit of uh, dollar weakness would actually help the commodity market significantly. So uh, I'm holding uh, Anglo, and uh, it's been a very good investment for me over the last six or seven months. Understood. Okay, well, let's move on to the Rio's. Well, the Rio Tinto, uh, similarly, on a buy signal on VectorVest, uh, significantly undervalued by VectorVest, uh, and as you can see, making rising bottoms, yep. uh, and uh, hopefully going to break out of a little triangular consolidation. In the uh, plot below the price, that's earnings per share, and earnings per share rising uh, quite strongly over the last year. And you can see, as earnings per share rose, uh, the VectorVest algorithm revalued the share during the course of the year, and that's the uh, uh, green line going up the page quite strongly there. So I I'm holding both those shares, and uh, they've been uh, good investments for me over the last few months. Understood. Let's move on to Eland Oil and Gas. Well, Eland Oil and Gas. Uh, has pulled back to support. Uh, we've had a, a very strong pullback, as you probably have noted, in the oil market that's come back significantly over the last uh, uh, well, couple of weeks, 10 days. Eland Oil and Gas has pulled back uh, to long-term support. I've defined long-term support by that uh, inclined trend line. Uh, it's pulled back in a flag pattern uh, and uh, it's significantly undervalued. Earnings per share is growing, maybe not as linear as I would like. Uh, I haven't got the share at the moment, but I'm watching it closely. It's significantly undervalued. And if the oil price should actually uh, find a bottom around about the $55 level, which yeah. I'm hoping it will, uh, and I see Eland Oil and Gas moving onto a buy on VectorVest, then I'd be very, very tempted to take a position in that share, although I'm not holding at the moment. The only oil share that I'm holding at the moment is Serica, which has had a really good run. Uh, but Eland Oil and Gas, I'm watching very closely. Understood. Okay, well, let's wrap up with the last slide. Pearson's. Well, Pe Pearson uh, clearly is not a commodity share, but uh, uh, my very first mentor, Moos, he always said that uh, in a pullback, uh, a strong pullback, the most important thing to watch is those shares that, in fact, showed relative strength in the pullback. So this old fellow, if he saw a month's pullback, he would look at the shares particularly index shares that outperformed in the pullback. And that's how I actually looked at Pearson. Uh, Pearson, in fact, during the month of October, when the overall market pulled back strongly, Pearson had a cracking run, right. which is always a good sign. Uh, now, clearly, I, I'm, I'm, I bought into Pearson myself uh, a few days ago, uh, but it pulled back. It pulled back to that last old high that I've marked by the horizontal line. That's also a 62% retracement of the last major range. It's uh, pushing up towards the 52 high, 52 week high. Uh, our advice uh, for uh, our subscribers is to sit on our hands and wait for the general market to confirm a bottom. Uh, with any luck, that's not far away. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, if the general market starts to move up again, that we'll see considerable strength in Pearson. During that false dawn, uh, where the short-term trend turned up from October the 30th, which in fact didn't, in fact, uh, uh, the, the short-term trend didn't change to the long-term trend. In that period, I in fact bought some Pearsons, and they're in, they're in the money by a little bit, but not by much. I think if the general market turns, Pearson's, Pearson will have a good run. Well, I'm always very interested in relative strength, and basically made a lot of money over the years using that piece of equipment. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, this old man was adamant that uh, he used to say, never let a good crisis go to waste. Always work out those shares that had outperformed during the way down. Those would be the first to turn um, uh, when uh, the general market turned back up again. Uh, he's long since dead, but uh, right. that was one of the <coughs> things he taught me way back in the 1980s. Well, hopefully he's listening down listening to your wise words this well, morning. I hope but, so, yes. Right, we've run out of time. David Paul, as always, thank you very much. Thank you, Moose. Thanks. Thank you.